uh, making us your preferred when it comes to the big conversations and the big interviews. We're here on Joy News, Joy 99.7 FM, and of course, uh, Joy Prime. Today, I'm bringing you a sit-down conversation with one man who sure has made his mark as a footballer and is now towing a path to make another mark, a major one of that, with his coaching career. We all do remember him with his exploits with the national under-17 team of Ghana, the Black Starlets of 1991, who conquered the whole world and brought Ghana's very first trophy, which was to be replicated in the year 1995. Of course, he went ahead to do a lot in terms of his professional career. And, uh, and he's one of Ghana's pioneers in the, the Italian the Syria. We're here on played his football with the likes of, of uh, Udinese, where he eventually became captain. And also made some very major landmarks, which we'll be talking about later on. Of course, in terms of uh, major moments with the Black Stars, everybody remembers him from that special center to go uh, kick, uh, which uh, Ghana recorded against Tunisia at the, um, you know, the uh, you know the Africa Cup of Nations back in 1998 in Burkina Faso. All of these and more have shaped up his career, which has seen him go into coaching and venture into territories where many people see as very difficult. He went back to his boyhood club, uh, RTU, to support and now has found himself with newly qualified in Swatraman FC. From the it's, it's actually true because mm -hmm. it's... it's it's something, I mean, you learn already from, from playing. Mm. I mean, when, when you want to venture into playing football, mm. you need to start um, becoming the leader on the pitch. I see. You know, gradually you see yourself becoming a, a, a knowledgeable about the game, mm. which I think it, it gives you the impact of, of what you will become in the future. Wow, interesting stuff there. Um, would want to relive some of the very big moments uh, with you in the Black Stars. People, I'm sure people still meet you and talk about uh, Burkina 98, when Always. you struck that ball from the center and it, and it beat the goalkeeper to score. I mean, that is, that is, that was an impossible one. Always. When I meet uh, uh, fan-loving people outside there, the only thing they, they, they remember me of is either the Italian 91, the scissor kick, yeah. or the long shots, from uh, from the center to go, it, it must make you. It must bring you a lot of you know fulfillment, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it feels good. It actually feels good. Mm. It 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 brings uh, uh, back good memories of the black stars and uh, the way we used to be and the the way we loved the game and we played with passion. Just try to become heroes of of of, of today. Mm. We we I mean during your time you were you were set to be. Uh, among the set of, of some of the finest players we had that never featured at the World Cup. Between that time and now, today, uh, we've recorded four qualifications for the FIFA World Cup. Um, Ghana has another opportunity to, to, to show it and do it again. What are your thoughts, especially considering that when we had the last opportunity in Brazil, things didn't go very well? Well, um, it's a pity. It's a pity that um, things didn't go well. I mean... Um it's a generational thing, mm. you know. Um, when you look back at uh, 1992, oh. especially the, the, the group of the, the Senegal 92 team, there has never been a club that looks good with mm. big named players like, like that. But yeah. at the end of the day, uh, we didn't go to World Cup. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a generational thing. And then coming to see these young lads made it fourth and, and we're getting, is it the fifth one now? This is our fourth This time. is our fourth yeah. one now. And I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Mm. Well, how do, you, how do you assess the, the, the possible performance? I mean, back in 2006, uh, many were those who doubted because we were making a maiden appearance. But now you see a new crop of uh, players who are going to mix up with a few old lads. Uh, Otoado is in there. He played in 
in 2006, and he's, he has a fair idea of what it looks like. What are your thoughts on that one as well? Well, it's, it's, it's a bit uh, worrisome mm. looking at the, the caliber of players we have today. Mm. Um, you can, you can, you can yeah. see that most, most, most of the players are um, um, coming from a, a low, low divisional clubs, mm -hmm. even though football can be something that uh, 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 surprising. Mm. Um, I, I, I also have it at heart knowing the, the, the group we're in mm. to play for the preliminaries uh, yeah. and it's, 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 it's worrisome. Mm. But I just hope uh, the, the technical team will do their work well, not to rush into things and then we'll see it through the first round and then we can pick up from there. Well, some, some uh, players you know, of Ghanaian descent you know, have, have managed to switch nationalities and, and play. It's generated great conversations. There are those who feel that uh, we need the best quality from all over the world. Um, how well do you see all of this in terms of the way they can gel with each other and play as a unit? I mean, we don't have enough games to the World Cup as we would have wanted. You use the right word, mm. gel. Mm. And that is a very, very difficult thing. And gelling up with, with co-colleagues is, is something that takes a little bit of time. Okay. And with the Black Stars and our rampant way of changing the players mm. that get to play together has been, has been too much. And this is something I think that will a little bit wear on us mm. because we should understand that the national team should be a team on its own. Okay. So therefore, if we are a teammate, mm. And then uh, we play a few matches together, and then the next time you don't see me, you get to meet a new, a new player. Mm. This person becomes a new person to you. Well, if you just joined us, we're still here uh, having this one-on-one -on -one conversation with the legendary Mohamed Gago, who's now been confirmed as head coach of newly qualified in Swatreman FC, who are looking forward to making a major uh, a bit of impact in the Ghana Premier League upon uh, their very first entry. We'll be talking about that in a bit, but we're still, you know, lurking around the issues of uh, the national team, the Black Stars. Um, sometimes when you look back and, uh, you know, observe what has happened over the period, um, how, how do you feel considering that with all the quality that you guys have, you were not able to win at a senior level, you were not able to win like a major trophy like the AFCON, for instance? Yes, uh, there were a little bit of issues mm. concerning, um, if I may put it this way, uh, disagreements mm. uh, between players, you know, big name players, I may say. Mm. Um, I think when we came down, some didn't want to voice out to say the truth about what transpired. I see. We at that time were, were the youngsters okay. in the team, so we, we just have to take ourselves of the radar of, of the big name players. Okay. Yeah. And this was in 1992? This was 1992. Okay. I mean, uh, there was a, a, a conflict, and I think it's, it's, it's a personal conflict between uh, the, the former captain, uh, Abedi Pele, and uh, some other colleagues. So there was a little bit of confusion that, that's my opinion, that, that brought everything into camp and the reason why we were not able to because I, I believe some players didn't give their best I see yes because of certain issues I see well uh, massive revelations also being made here uh, with this conversation and um, you know okay I <laughs> if I do the count <laughs> I'm not doing so well Let, let's take a seat let's take a seat um, uh, you you at a certain point decided to venture into you know, coaching, and you, you have, you know, you've managed to, to carve a certain niche for yourself. Let's begin with that decision to go to RTU, your, your boyhood club. Um, at the time, RTU needed a lot of stability and restructuring, and you took that decision. I mean, what, what really informed it? Um, I mean... It's a great thing being a player and another being a coach. Mm. When I came back from Europe, you know, I 
I wanted to play for uh, my mother club a, a season or two. Okay. But then I realized ITU were in the lower division. So I went to my, my manager, Mr. Kujufiano, and said, uh, I want to end my career in Ghana. He said, oh, well, I am still with Ashanti Gold, so let's just see what we can do. Immediately, he invited me in. I was registered and all that. Let's zero in now on in Swatreman FC. Mm -hmm. um, they, they obviously have made very big headlines, especially after that big feat of qualifying from a very, very concentrated zone of Ghana's club football and you know, a place where people's hearts are virtually tied to, to the ball that is being kicked. Um, first of all, what went into the decision to accept to work with a club that had just you know, arrived in here? Because that one also comes with its own challenges and its own toughness. Yes, I know. I mean, um, football in any other level is football. And to showcase what you know is all about getting yourself into the areas where you will have challenges. Other than that, you always remain the mediocre kind of a coach that will go around coaching small clubs here and there. I love challenges. And I love criticism. You love criticism? Yes, I love criticism. When you criticize me, makes me feel there is something going wrong with what I'm doing. Therefore, I need to sit up. And what are you doing to me? You're not killing me, you're making me a better person. So I'll go back home, go back to my drawing board, and, and try to find out where I've gone wrong. Uh -huh. So with, 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 with the acceptance of the, 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 the premier uh, side club, like, like in Swaziland, it's, it's something that I, I have been waiting so long. I see. Yes, because, um, you know, in Ghana, mostly when the new clubs come or qualify into premiership, the next season, they are, they are back again. And this is one of the things I want to avoid. So we are going back to start training and train hard. And I think all these things comes from lack of time of preparation. Okay. Or lack of adequate preparation for, for, for it. So I, I am prepared and I'm getting myself ready. As you know, when you came, I started packing already. I am going to be on, on the move. I see. And then we're going to take the team out or in Sunyano, wherever, to try to get them into good shape and get to work. Wow, get to work indeed. What will be the target for you? I mean, you have said that you want to stay, but um, staying could mean just staying um, in, you know, like the 13th position, uh, you know, or even maybe like the 14th position where you are just a shade or two above uh, the drop in relegation. Is that the kind of stay you're looking for? Mm -hmm. Or it's a kind of stay that would see you do significant things like the likes of Bichim United who find themselves within the same zone, uh, you know, geographical zone as, as, as in Swatrema? Yes, I, I understand where, where, where you're coming from. I mean, staying means to do better than average. Okay. And to do better than average means you should be above uh, the, the ninth position. It should be somewhere the, the seventh, the sixth, yeah, thereabouts. I mean, that's above average. And there is no promises and there is no pressure. All that we, we're doing is go there and get the good work done and make sure people of Unswatri will enjoy the game they come to watch and the club management will enjoy what we are doing and what we are putting on the ground for the future. I see. Um, in terms of the material and what you know, what you will be expecting or what will hit you in the Premier League in terms of the challenges and your position. Who, which clubs would you rate, you know, which clubs would you rate 
uh, thoroughly, you know, that that have a chance in, you know, um, making it or giving in Swatreman a tough challenge in the league? I mean, you've been monitoring. Yes, um, there are there are a few um, clubs like, uh, of course, House of Oak, uh, clubs like Kotoko. Mm. I'm saying this because of experience wise. You know, they are old enough to be the great grand uh, uh, parents of Swatirman, isn't it? Yeah. And the experience is, is, is the best teacher, they say. So, um, apart from this, this, these clubs, I think every other club should be on the level of Swatirman because I, I prepare my team in a such that not all the matches are equal and not all the matches are the same. The approach of each and every match is, is totally different. Hmm. I see. Yes. Now, um, in terms of material as well, what do you make of the, uh, the moves? You know, um, we've seen maybe the likes of Augustine Okra, for instance, get a deal in Tanzania. He's gone. He's not going to be in the Ghana Premier League next season. So uh, one bit of quality gone. Uh, possibility of not having a Tuga here. Uh, you know, for Kotoko for the next season, very, very high, and many others in other clubs. Uh, how do you feel about that regard, uh, you know, especially when you talk about a lot of consistency? Well, well, it, it, it is good, provided when they get to where they're going, they are going to perform. The performance is what matters. When you go there and you don't work, it weighs back onto us. We want to see them go out there and become somebody. Go out there and keep working. Go out there and keep having the match rhythm into their system. And with that, when they do well, they can be called at any time and they will be ready at any given time. Interesting stuff there. Well, um, this is uh, that conversation with a man, Mohamed Gago, who has taken up a new challenge in the Ghana Premier League, returning as a head coach, this time with a Swatreman who have just qualified for uh, the Ghana Premier League. We'll just wrap it up here, and uh, we're going to be doing some more, especially going to relive the big moments in your, your album. But uh, let's talk about you and your relationship with management and the board and what you make of the club and its uh, setup you know, uh, relatively as a, as a Division I side, you know, looking at the kinds of structures that clubs have on a, on a general scale? Well, it's a good one. I mean, they, they mean business. The owner is a businessman, a politician, and he knows what he wants. And that is why he's ventured into putting up all what he has done for the, for, for, for the people of Unswatirman. And I believe and I know Swatirman is going to become one of the best clubs in the country in the near future. I see. Yes, we are just kickstarting. But definitely, definitely, big name players are going to be traveling all over Africa to want to come and play for Swatirman because of the structures and the plans they are putting down for, for this, this, this club. This club is going to have a a very, very good future. Great stuff there. All right. Um, what's also the uh, future plan for you? I mean, you obviously would want to move on to other things, but you just started. Um, what will be the projection, your your relationship with Swatreman? Away from, obviously, you've signed a contract, but yes. away from that as well, uh, what do you want to do in terms of the relationship you have with the club? Well, I... Um, they've gotten me on board uh, as a coach for now, but uh, we'll see what the future holds. And uh, I would also want to link them to, to my former clubs in, in Europe uh, to, to have this uh, affiliation thing going on between us and them. And uh, if possible, we can even organize some summer tournaments in which we we'll, we'll take all these boys out there to go in and, and enjoy themselves and play. And if any other, other clubs sees a star among them and you want to, to pick them, I mean, why not? I mean, this is, this is the way all of us went through. I see. Yes. What will be your 
message to the people, the fans of the club, and those who have vested their interest or have invested their hearts into the club as you embark on the start of this journey? Well, um, I know them very well, and I know how passionate they are about the, the, the club and how they want the club to, to get to the, to the higher levels. So um, I only have to tell them to, to have a little patience, especially with, with these young lads that we, we, we are moving from Division One to Premier. Some are going to start it very slow and some will get onto their feet immediately. immediately.